Okay, so we're gonna kind of just jump right into it because I know um, this person from, I think I know the answer to it, um, is interwoven um, throughout your career and out your life. But can you just kind of touch on that one person who has the greatest impact on your career and your development and everything you are as a person? Yeah, that's my mom. Yeah. Um, well, okay, Anson's one, but my mom is definitely like my key mom. <laughs> we all we all love moms, right? Yeah. Um, they made you. They mm -hmm. want you to be successful. They see um, basically your true potential as a person, but also with what you're doing in life. And um, she was a single mom of four. Uh, battled cancer twice, um, put herself through college, started two grassroots organizations for nonprofits helping single moms, um, like sick all the time, and she never complained. She had a smile on her face, and she, she always reminded us that we can do anything we put our mind to. Her one of her like go-to quotes, and I still have it in my car is. Mm -hmm. Um, everything in life that comes your way is an opportunity, whether good or bad, it's an opportunity to learn and grow from, and it's how you approach the cir circumstances that make a difference. So it's all about positivity and taking everything that comes your way and learning from it. And um, I've, I've done that ever since I was like 16 years old. You know, we all go through some learning phases. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was a good kid, but like behind the scenes, um, probably made some mistakes and um, but it's definitely it's definitely got me to where I am today and um, she wouldn't she wouldn't take no for an answer or if it's too hard she would be like no you can you got this take one day at a time and um, she knew that I was going to be an awesome soccer player but um, the most important was the type of person I'd be. And she, she fell in love with the program. She came to a summer camp when I was in ninth grade. And she goes, this program is going to make you an amazing person, no matter if you do soccer for the rest of your life or uh, do something else. Um, you're going to have an amazing time. And she, so she, yeah, she's my superhero. And she passed away my junior year. Mm -hmm. And now... It's about me giving my life, not to her, but um, representing what she kind of set the building blocks for me and my other siblings to do. So um, yeah, we all, we all want a purpose and that's my purpose. And, and I feel like, I feel like I'm on my way. Yeah. Sure. Um, speaking, speaking just from seeing you through that whole process, just to see the strength and the grace and how you were able to shoulder it, but yet feel it, but yet use it, if that makes sense, like is no. a testament just to what an amazing job she did raising you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like to see how you were able to handle the hardest moment in your entire life is I think just another testament to what an amazing, amazing woman that she was. And I'm so lucky that I was able to meet her for a, for a few few times and, and to be around her because she had that aura about her that you just knew that like, that's a strong woman right there. And like, she's Bye. had to go through some shit and she look at, look at what she's done. Yeah. Uh, so to see, to see how you've handled it and used it and, and carried her and lived on in honor of her like that and, and everything that you do is just a huge testament to her as a mom and I know I just I don't think I've ever told you that but um I've always I've always <laughs> I've always yeah I've no I've always wanted to say that and yeah no I've always wanted to say that because um just the grace that you carry yourself with is is remarkable and and I'm that's why I'm so excited to kind of let people hear your story is because not a lot came easy to you and um your perseverance and everything is just is is remarkable and inspiring so i'll stop my soapbox and let <laughs> tina ask the next question <laughs> yeah. well i mean i obviously didn't have the honor of meeting your mom but i think what we've learned in these podcasts is women are just incredibly powerful and strong and kind of learning about your story from afar it's clear why you took the steps that you did and were able to persevere. So 
on that note, obviously looking back now, we know you had a great career at UNC, but that wasn't, you didn't come in necessarily as the star recruit that, you know, had all these teams waiting for them, which frankly, no one comes into UNC that way typically, even if you are a star recruit. Um, can you kind of talk about obviously being so close with your mom, growing up in the Midwest, having, as you said, opportunities to probably get scholarship, playing the Midwest, and kind of taking that leap of faith on yourself to say, okay, I'm going to walk on at UNC, which is a historic program. There's never any guarantees, even for the top players, um, and kind of going through that journey and, you know, earning a name for yourself in that program. Yeah. Um, okay. So where do you want me to start? <laughs> <laughs> I guess the decision to, to, to take, become a walk on yeah. and, and do that process. Um, and then kind of how you were able to, you know, find yourself a role, um, in the program. Yeah. Well, the decision was easy, <laughs> um, <laughs> which it doesn't seem easy to many people. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to so many people and they're like, oh, well, that college is so good and I get a full ride here and I'm going to get playing time. You know, that's, that's a classic story. And um, my mom just always taught me to be that small fish in a big pond because that's mm -hmm. where you learn and grow the most um, and to take chances and risk all the time. She was like, you know what, you only live once. And um she actually like made the decision for me it made it easy uh, she she was she always knew me better than i knew myself so when she passed i was like wait what do i do <laughs> who's gonna tell uh, me what i need to do yeah. i don't even know <laughs> yeah um not until i got there did i actually realize what i was getting into to be honest you know mm -hmm. you're young you're naive you think you're invincible um i was one of the best i got I got nominated for Gatorade player of the year in Nebraska and I had no idea what else was out there um, until I got to the program and I was like holy crap I'm with Crystal Dunn, Kalia, like these players <laughs> that are incredible and um, but yeah so I would say it was easy for me because I've never I've never not taken an amazing opportunity to try and prove to everyone else, but also me of what I'm capable of. And um, I fell in love with Chapel Hill when I went during the summer. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, going through your college visits and stuff, it's getting younger and younger. You're 14, 15. Um, so who knows if like you're making the right decision, but after reading the book Blink by Malcolm Gladwell, mm -hmm. it's like this gut feeling where it's like, okay, I know I'm supposed to be here. I don't know. I don't know if you guys had that. Yeah. yeah I was just, sorry, I just wanted to add this. I think you bring up a really good point about, um, I think when you're younger, because I know that I, I transferred, I went to Vanderbilt my first year, which I mean, That's it was a great there. decision, but as a university, it was a great decision. But I think looking back at the 15 year old me making the decision, to your point, I had this full scholarship waiting for me. And I think sometimes it's easier to make what you think is the easier path than the harder path. And I know looking back and then going to Virginia where you guys know, I mean, Steve's the same way. You're never, he'll never sit down with somebody and say 100% you're playing. You may, he may say you have a good shot if you come in and play well, but I think that's something to highlight in your story. And I think everyone goes to that when you're, it's crazy. Now you're like 13 years old making decisions, young players. I think it's important to make a gut decision, but also not always take the easier path because you never yeah. know. I think, your heart and your will coaches are going to play the people that are going to give the most effort and show up and improve themselves. And, um, sorry, I'm ranting, but I, I just think that's a really important note in the story because, you know, Joanna was like an anomaly at eighth grade committing. Yeah. To yeah. That's like a norm now. No, that's but literally the, a norm now. But the, the cool thing is, I mean, not cool when I was a freshman, but like I came in high recruit, but like you ain't, nothing <laughs> like no matter no matter top recruit walk on like you got to earn your stripes and if you don't like I remember my freshman year there were 12 of us and like we had so many people that there were like starters reserves and then there was like deep reserves and like you just had to battle and like it, it's it's pretty insane it's pretty insane. you guys rank sorry i just need this to clarify for all those non UNC. <laughs> you guys ranked after each training is that a, is that a fact or is that like bs in the world or something no. yeah. yeah okay 
So like the drills, it wouldn't be after each session. Well, I guess it would like, so if we did like a 5v2, then like that session, that specific drill was tallied and then put into a spreadsheet that then would rank each one and then it was all tallied up. 